Well, Issam Ghazni is here, the chair of the Nottingham Liberal Democrats. Issam, you were at that meeting, weren't you, at Trent Bridge with Nick Clegg. What did he say to you to, to try and raise morale here in the East Midlands? Well, he didn't need to say too much because actually we've already got a lot of morale. Um, you know, the people, the, the, the members in the, the, the East Midlands um, are fairly positive, fairly energetic. Uh, you know, we've had a few uh, setbacks in the local elections, but we still control two local authorities in the East Midlands. So he didn't make an apology to you then? No, he didn't make an apology to us, but we discussed lots of issues around um, uh, the, the coalition and around how, how we need to, uh, you know, further cement our support in the region. And after your meeting, then obviously he's gone on to make this apology. Was that anything that you said that might have prompted that? No, I mean, certainly there, there, there was a discussion on a range of issues, and one of those issues was, of course, uh, student tuition fees. And, and, and Nick has been uh, up and down the country. This is part of his summer tour. And Nottingham was the last stop in his summer tour. Mm. And during that time, he's been listening to members up and down the country. So I'm sure he's been taking in what people have been saying to him. But surely some of them are, are painting quite a gloomy picture here in the East Midlands. We don't have any... Lib Dem MPs in the East Midlands? No, we don't have any Lib Dem MP, uh, MPs in the East Midlands, but we have a, a, an active MEP. And we, we, as I said, we control two local authorities. We, we are, we are, we are uh, op the, the, the strongest opposition in two county councils. Um, and, you know, recently we... So you're we quite comfortable with the situation as it is then? No, we're obviously not comfortable. We obviously want to do a lot better, and, and we're always working to do a lot better. But we, we, we're, we're not, you know, completely complacent about the situation, but we're also not uh, okay. at a loss with morale. Okay, okay. Well, well Nicky, you, you, are you worried that disaffected Lib Dem voters in the East Mid Midlands will be turning to Labour? I think it's been very interesting at the next election to find out you know, where the Lib Dem voters uh, do, do go. Um, uh, local by-election results at the moment tend to, local council by-election results, mm. tend to suggest that they are splitting all over the place. Um, and uh, some are going to Labour, <coughs> uh, <coughs> some are coming to us, um, as seen in a recent <coughs> by-election in, in Loughborough, and um, some clearly are going to stay with the, the Lib Dems. I think in Loughborough what's very interesting, a lot of people went, went to the Lib Dems because of the Iraq war. And um, the question is going to be you know, whether that's still an issue for people who have voted uh, Lib Dem in the past or, or whether um, perhaps other things now you know, have superseded that. What about this talk of Lib Dems possibly turning to Labour as their next coalition partners? Well, you know, I, I, mean, I think that the fact is there are going to be relations between, uh, you know, all sorts of uh, politicians. So, I mean, you know, there will be Labour politicians who you know Lib Dems very well and, and vice versa with the Conservatives. Um, so uh, I think, I'm not sure what the country will think of another, if there is another coalition government, <laughs> what they think of it. So I think at the moment, I'm sure we're all trying to go for majority government in 2015. Okay. John, would you, your party work with the Lib Dems? Well, I mean, we're campaigning to... Re rebuild a trust with the British people and win a majority in our own right. But if it got you back into government? Well, who knows what will happen in the next election. But obviously we've been saying now that people who we have uh, strong sympathies with, like Vince Cable, will work with him on some of the policies he wants to bring forward. But if I can just take a step back to this apology, let's just be clear what Nick Clegg has done. He hasn't apologised for voting to treble tuition fees to £9,000. He's actually apologised for making the pledge in the first place. <coughs> if I may say so, it's a rather cynical manoeuvre when you think back to the general election, they use this as a big campaigning tool in constituencies like mine. This wasn't some casual pledge, mm. this is what they campaigned on in seats like Leicester South. Uh, it could be said that you're hemorrhaging support here in the East Midlands, and is it that man at the top, this man who's made the apology, who's to blame? No, no, no. I think, can I first, you know, correct the record? I mean, you know, the, the apology he's made, uh, we have to respect somebody who in politics you know, uh, feels that, that, that mistakes have been made. I mean, there aren't many politicians who make apologies on a pu public platform. Tony Blair just to this... sorry, make it all better then. Well, no, but I'm just about to say that Tony Blair never made any apology over the Iraq war. And Gordon Brown never made any apologies over selling the gold reserves at, at, at half price. And in Leicester, um, you know, Patricia Hewitt never made any apologies over the £700 million a commitment she made to not, Leicester Hospital. He's not apologising so over it, tuition it, it fees. It takes up. a certain level of, 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 of politician to be able to be... Well, OK, but we've heard that on the doorstep, people are campaigning, and when they go to the doorstep and say Nick Clegg's name, people don't want to... But no, that's not true, because I, I, I'm out knocking on doors every week, and when I knock on doors, well, maybe that's, maybe things that's are getting progressively your... better. You know, things are getting progressively better. And actually, people are saying to us that since we've lost our local Lib Dem councillors, we're not getting the service that we used to have before from local Liberal Democrat councillors. And that's in particular where Labour 
have taken control. Because Labour take local communities for granted, we don't. So but what are your tactics then for an East Midlands comeback? Have you, have you got some? Yeah, the tactics basically are that we have to continue to work uh, uh, where we have our strengths, and our strengths are working in the local communities, in local community politics. Liberal Democrats on the ground are the strongest when they work with local people, and that's what we intend to do. You're not putting anyone up, though, for police commissioner. Is that part of the plan? If you don't field anybody, you can't lose. No, no, that, that, that's not the issue. The, the, the issue is that, that we feel that local people make a decision, local members make a decision. And members in the East Midlands felt that, the, uh, uh, members in Nottinghamshire, for example, felt that there was no need for us to stand a candidate, and that, that's the decision. Okay. Well, Lisan Ghazni, thank you very much thank indeed uh, for, for joining us in the studio.